Hey everyone, welcome back to Adventures with Edna. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be doing a little work on Edna. We're going to be replacing the cowl lacing. And if you're not sure what the cowl lacing is, uh, it's actually a cloth, like a woven cloth seal that goes between the hood and the cowl here. Um, on a lot of these trucks, they've all just gotten old with age and need to be replaced. Um, what it does is it kind of helps like air from under the hood from coming up through the hood here it's kind of like a barrier that way you're not having like engine fumes and smells coming in through your your vent here when you've got it open um, so it's and it probably provides some kind of noise you know issues for the hood kind of probably helps kind of dampen vibrations a little bit as well so let me t let's take a look at Edna's right now and I'll show you exactly what's wrong with it rained all night so everything's good and wet for this project okay so if you come up here this is what's left of the cowl lacing it looks terrible there's pretty it's gone so you can see it's supposed to go across here and we've got dirt and grime where it's supposed to be So if you look there, that's where it's all supposed to go across. There's just little remnants left of what's left of it. It's not good at all. all right, so this is what it's supposed to look like. I actually bought this a few years ago from LMC Truck. It's only like nine bucks for the kit. But that's definitely a lot different than the old stuff. So you can see it's basically a woven piece of cloth. Uh, it's got like a rope there and a rope there and it just goes all the way across uh, to form that seal. Now one issue that you run into with replacing this is how it's held on. I suppose you could probably glue it on if you wanted to but I'm going to go with the original way. And it's held in with sheet metal nails. Alright so if you look closely here you can see it's got a twist to it almost like a screw but they just tap into the metal which is kind of weird now this may seem like an easy project you throw the strip down you put the nails in you're done but it's not quite that simple uh, the hood is completely in the way uh, you guys just noticed when I tried to show you where this thing actually goes that it's the hood's all up in the way. You can barely look at it. Now, in person, you can see it a little easier. It's kind of hard to shove a camera in there. But when you have the hood open, it's completely blocking access to, to hit it with a hammer. You can't really see the whole thing all at one time. Uh, so we're going to have to pull the hood off, which I don't really want to do, but it's the only way to do this project. All right, so if you look up in here, I don't know if Edna's hood's ever been taken off before, uh, but it's got... It's got, it's got stuff, you know, um, it's got like a wire that runs through the screws to keep them from turning out over time. That wire is still on there, so I assume that that's original, but we got to take that out. Plus, I'm doing this by myself, so pulling a hood off by myself should be a lot of fun. Uh, but it looks like we got to move two on each side, if not three, if we want to take the hood all the way off. Um, I might try to do the lazy man's way and see if we can get away with just taking the, the two inner bolts off uh, that are right there and then avoiding that one. It might be able to just kind of hinge forward and then be out of the way, but if it doesn't, we'll pull those out and take the whole thing off. So let's get started. All right, so first we're gonna cut the wire and then we're gonna back out the bolts. Getting this wire out is a job in itself. Move the new one out of the way. Throw away that wire so it doesn't end up in a tire. Let's pull some bolts out. 
I'm actually surprised the bolts are turning. I kind of expected them to just be stuck, but I did spray them a few weeks ago, just kind of loosen them up. All right, we got one. It just occurred to me that maybe putting something in here to prop the hood up could be a good idea. So it doesn't just, you know, tumble on in. We got a safety board. I wonder what Chance is doing right now. One more to go. Could you go for a flathead? I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared about how this is about to play out. Putting my head under there while prying this off might not be a good idea. Looks like we just got into an accident. Oh man, this is totally gonna work. <laughs> Looks awful. <laughs> Alright, so now you can actually see what we're doing. So here's the original nails across here and of course it's just it's just hard to look at all right we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup up here because it just looks like straight dirt and then what's left of the original one now I don't know if you're aware but there is a special tool for taking out these nails uh, and putting them back in uh, luckily you could pick it up at any hardware store it's called these you may not have seen these before but my plan is to try and grab these things with the wire cutter part and then flex because I figure if you try to I figure if you try to get it this way and pull it out, you're pulling more to the side and we want to be able to reuse these holes. So if we get it here, it changes the angle and we pull it out as straight as we can get it out. Okay, so that's one. Now we gotta do it how many more times? Two, three, four, five, six. So let's just assume 11. Okay, so you may have noticed that I changed my technique a little bit. Initially, I was going to pull from here, but I ended up taking most of them out this way because it turns out, because of the, the twist that's kind of screw-like, they twist as they come back out. So I kind of had to allow for them to turn as they were coming up and out. Uh, so now our next step is going to be to get this cleaned off. I was hoping I had some purple power, but apparently all I had was simple green. Oh. <sighs> 
That looks kind of cool because you can still see some of uh, Edna's original green there. Never got such a head-on view over this part of the engine before, which is interesting. It's dirty back there. Now's the part where we're going to do something that some of you guys aren't going to like. We're going to do some sanding and painting. Uh, I know that we just uncovered some of Edna's original color, but this cloth, or this piece is made of cloth, uh, so it will get wet. Uh, and it's already kind of rusty through here. So I'd like to get some primer and a little bit of paint down right there, uh, just to kind of keep that from getting worse. So that's what's going to happen. All right, now let's all remember that Edna's got the patina going on, so this isn't exactly a professional paint job. But we're going to do our best. This wind is not not ideal, especially when it's blowing towards the BMW, which can't start and move out of the way. <laughs> the can exploded, <laughs> so we don't have any control. We just we just paint now. So you can see we just did a very professional primer job on this with an exploding paint can. Let's move on. All right, so while we're waiting on that to dry, uh, we're gonna paint it green, but not just any green. We're going to paint it Ford Meadow Green, which is Edna's original color. I found this company online several years ago because I wondered if you could get the original color and how hard it would be. So after a little air conditioning, after a little bit of research, uh, I found a company out of New Orleans, simply called Automotive Touch-Up. Uh, they mix original paint colors any way you want to get them. You can get spray cans like I did. Uh, you can get paint ready to mix. You can get touch-up paint. It's all over their website. It's really easy to use. Uh, so I got a base coat of Ford Meadow Green, part number M14283. So if you've got Meadow Green, that's how you can get it. Uh, so I pretty much touched up a lot of Edna's paint back when I first got her because uh, the color just wasn't coming back around the way I had hoped uh, with doing the different stuff to try to clean it up a little bit. So some areas got repaint, some areas are just cleared. Uh, but this is what we're going to do to this section, put the original color back on, and then we're going to clear it when that dries. I spared you guys the pain of watching paint dry. We're going to hit it with our green.
All right, so next we're going to apply a satin clear over the rest of it, and then that'll have it giving it the same look that all this has here. And then we'll be ready for the new strip. In case anybody forgot what we were doing here. Glad we're moving on to the clear here, just since the wind seems to be picking up out here. The Venom's got a dead battery over there. I can't exactly, you know, out of the way. Something I chose to do while I was in here, this was a good opportunity to get in here and put actual grease on these hinges because you can see there's a pretty significant amount of wear over the years. So I got some hard grease in there as opposed to just spraying them with some WD-40. I got in there with a Q-tip and you know packed it under there. So now I'll just take a towel and wipe that down a little bit just so it doesn't look so terrible. All right, we've let this dry for a few hours now. So... I'm going to try to get this strip on. I was going to start on the other side, but the sun is too bright. You can't really see what's going on. All this wind has got pollen and other stuff already all over it. All right, we got a new bag of these sheet metal nails. If it'll open. So, the way this goes is it's going to sit across here, pretty much fall along this, this drip rail, if that's what you want to call that. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can't push this through the fabric here. one doesn't seem super tight so I made a bit of an executive decision here the uh, I feel like the screws are slightly loose and I don't want them to be loose and I worry about water getting in through the nail holes so I'm gonna put a little bit of weather adhesive on each of the nails as they go in
I did a good job of scratching the paint out. Paint right there on the last one. All right, so we got a nice new cowl lacing strip across there. These will just bend down from the hood. Okay, so now we just got to put the hood back on like this. Ta-da! All right, so that's pretty much going to do it for putting this on. Uh, if any of you guys are uh, wanting to change this yourselves, uh, I got it through the new strip. It came as a little kit. All right, so if any of you guys want to uh, change out uh, this strip, like I said, it comes within a kit uh, from LMC Truck. The part number on it is 41-1510. Uh, I think it was about eight or nine bucks. It comes with a new strip and it comes with the new nails to put it in. Um, I kind of went a little more overboard with putting mine in just because it was rusty under there and I didn't want to keep the rust underneath it, so I did my best to clean that up. Uh, basically as a do-it-yourself job. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, we put these videos out uh, every Monday. Uh, Chance will be back with me next week. Uh, so we'll be here with a new adventure. Um, thanks for watching Adventures with Edna, and we'll see you in the next one.